Okay, so let's talk about that F1 generation. So I think it's easier to look at pictures of this um, instead. So, all right, you've got your parent generation, and so you've got purple, true breeding purple, and he's going to breed it with a true breeding white, and whatever offspring they have is called the F1 generation. And what he noticed is all of that F1 generation was showing purple. Then what he did is he let these guys self-pollinate, and say, see what shows up in that next generation, which he called the F2 generation, and he found that there was always a three to one ratio of purple to white. So this happened all the time, and so he said something's gotta be going on here, and that's what prompted a lot of these um, experiments to happen. So he called whatever showed up in that F1 generation, that first offspring generation, was going to be dominant. And um, dominant is going to be something that is expressed whether um, it's two dominants or a dominant and a recessive. It covers up the recessive, okay? So alleles are alternative forms of genes. Um, so you can have a dominant allele or a recessive allele. And everybody in general has two alleles for different traits or characters. Okay. So then the one that did not get expressed in that first generation, so in that case it would be the white flower, that's called the recessive allele. Now for a recessive trait to show up, they both have to be there. So it has to be two recessive alleles to show the recessive trait. Okay. Um, so he started to do some numbers to it, and so he came up with a couple of these ideas. First one is that parents don't transmit physiological traits directly to their offspring. You're going to get a mix of mom and dad, right? You're not going to just get a clone of mom or a clone of dad. Um, for each character, you're going to get two alleles, one from each parent, and that could be dominant-dominant, dominant-recessive, or recessive-recessive. Um, so alternative forms of genes are called alleles. And... Um, Basically, we can call the um, genetic makeup of an organism homozygous or heterozygous. And I think this is easiest if we just use letters. So we'll um, go here and I can show you what I'm talking about. Whoops, wrong pen. Okay, so the first, um, we'll use the letter T. How about that? So, um, oops, that's the eraser. Okay, so we could have big T, big T. Or we could have little t, little t, or we could have big t, little t. Now, the dominant we're using a capital letter for, and the recessive we're using lowercase. In both of these cases, these are going to be what we call homozygous. Homo means same. You have two of the same, right? This one is going to be called heterozygous. Hetero means different, right? And if you look, they have different alleles. They have one of each, okay? So those are the two different terms that you're going to hear all the time in this chapter, all the time. Okay, the next thing he came up with is um, the two alleles are going to segregate during gamete production and don't influence each other in any way, so it's not like they try to stick together or anything like that. Um, and if the two alleles differ, the dominant one is going to be the one that gets expressed. The recessive one just gets covered up. Okay. Now another term is genotype and phenotype. Okay. So um, the actual alleles that someone has, so the letters that we'll use, that's their genotype. That's the actual alleles that they have. The phenotype is what this looks like physically. Okay. So here we've got the phenotype of brown eyes. The genotype would be big B, little b. Now in genetics problems, we use um, eye color a lot. Um, it's not the best thing because there's actually a lot of alleles that go into eye color, but it's easy and, and it's commonly used, so I do use that a lot. Um, okay, so dominant alleles are going to be written with an uppercase letter. Recessive is going to be lowercase. Um, then you've got um, a different, uh, three different ways that things could play out. You could have homozygous recessive, which would be little p, little p. You could have homozygous dominant, which is big P, big P. Or you could have heterozygous, which is big P, little p. Okay, so those are all the possible combinations you can have. And heterozygous is always going to show the um, dominant phenotype. Okay, now remember, I like to start you off where we're in our happy little bubble where everything follows the rules. Enjoy, we're going to be there for a little bit, um, but there are going to be exceptions to these rules. Okay, so in the next part, we're going to start doing Punnett squares to kind of show you a little bit more how we are going to use genotype and phenotypes and ratios and stuff like that.